Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to another episode of Code Cop, the series where we go over questionable or sometimes down route bad or terrible advice offered in places like LinkedIn, Twitter or blogs. LinkedIn specifically is terrible, never get advice from LinkedIn because the algorithm just promotes anything as long as it gets a couple of likes. So the advice I have for you for today is coming from LinkedIn, but as always the person who wrote this is censored because this is not about the person, this is about the advice and what we can learn from it. This advice I have here in particular is down route terrible, so let's dive straight into it so I can show you. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on downtrain.com. Okay, so let's take a look at the advice itself and I'm always starting with the code presenting on the advice. Usually there's this image where they say this thing on the top, this thing is bad or warning or be careful. But this thing at the bottom, that is a good one. Well, let's take a closer look. So be immutable is a statement. It's all about immutability. So do not use required properties with getter and setters on a user class particular here. Instead, use fields that are public and read only and initialize them from the constructor. What? Like how are these two things comparable even remotely? First, if your point is about immutability, there's way better ways to do it without having to resort back to fields. Also, do you even understand what properties are in here? Because, well, as I'm going to show you, you're still going to have fields behind the scenes, but properties expose them in a very specific way. So I think on surface level, we can all agree, especially if you're familiar with C Sharp and C Sharp's latest features, that this is bad. However, how's the reaction on this? Amazing, great, like, I love this, this is a brilliant idea. Like, don't just thumbs up anything you see on LinkedIn, just think about it for a second. Now let's take a look at the text accompanying this piece of advice because context is always very important. And I'm sure there's more into this, there's nuances usually on these descriptions that say that maybe this is not something that someone recommends about everything, but it's more about some niche situation. So let's see. Make all classes immutable and achieve high maintainability. What? How is that even remotely a statement that you are seriously making. Immutability helps to have classes small. How? What? If a class needs many properties, how would immutability change that? Maintainable, again, how? Cohesive, how? Decoupled, how? You're just throwing words around that you've read that doesn't actually mean anything. The only thing missing here is clean. Okay, let's continue. An immutable class is much easier to understand than a mutable one. Maybe not necessarily. What is immutability? Immutability is being unable to change the state of an object after it is created. Yeah, that's one form of mutability that I can sort of agree with. Let's see the explanation. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called Deep Dive into Modular Monoliths. And it's a direct sequel from the Getting Started delivered a few weeks ago by our Dallas of Steve Smith. Steve did an amazing job with that first course and you loved it. So we had to get out the Deep Dive one as fast as possible just to see how the whole application is completing and being ready to go to production with more features and more modules to have a complete modular monolith, which in case you don't know, I think it's the Goldilocks zone between microservices and old bad monoliths. It's where most people, and by most I mean almost everyone, should start before they feel like they have to go anywhere else, maybe microservices or maybe even further. Both the deep dive and the getting started should be taken by every .NET developer working in modern .NET. There's so many best practices you're going to learn there. And to celebrate the launch of the deep dive, you can use code MODULAR20 at checkout or use the link in the description to claim 20% off that course. And you can also add the Getting Started course in your basket for a massive discount if you don't have that already. And on top of that, we also have a From Zero to Hero Modular Models bundle now, which allows you to combine both courses with a 20% discount. Okay, now back to the video. Imagine we create a user with the name John. After some time, we decide to make it Mark. This could be things like a mistake in typing the name or someone just changes their name. But we shouldn't do it by modifying the object of John. He is John. You cannot make it mark. You should not be able to. There is nuance to this. By just making a field read-only, you're throwing out encapsulation out of the way, one of the fundamental concepts of OOP, Object Oriented Programming, because normally what you would have is a change name method where the name is changed by the user class, the class who should own the functionality 
or maybe you have a user service that allows you to mutate the name of John to Mark. Yes, you can represent all your changes by creating a whole new object every time. And I'm going to show you a few ways that C Sharp has improved in this. But this is a very costly operation. And one of the biggest issues with functional language specifically that have mutability baked into everything is that they can be slower because of how they handle object creation every single time. Okay, let's continue. So to create a new user, you just create a new instance of the user and then you reassign everything. So it's like mapping all over again to reassign everything. Now we have the with keyword and I'm going to show you the with keyword that is not mentioned anywhere at all here. An immutable object encapsulates whatever is necessary. It will never change. There are very valid cases for immutability. Contracts specifically are a great counter for immutability because those objects have some incoming data. They don't need to be changed. You just take it and you put it somewhere. But saying make all classes immutable is just such a stretch. Like don't give such dumb advice, just general advice, just because you have to write something that Monday. Do you want a different object? Create a new one. Do not touch the existing one. Maybe you can create an object with a more generalized name, but if you violate OOP rules, it is not a good hack. Well, you violate OOP rules by using a functional concept by definition, because encapsulation should wrap how this data is changed, particularly with getters and setters. And in this case, in C Sharp, we call them properties. Let's go into the ID to take a closer look. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have the exact same code as in the example. So the argument is that if you use this first bad approach that is mutable, then you can go here and say user.name is, I don't know, John. Yeah, okay, sure, it is. Now, can I make it immutable without having uh, to change or change everything back to a field? Well, I actually can because I can have the init keyword in C Sharp that makes that property over here initializable only, init only. Nothing can change its value after it has been initialized. Want to use a constructor? Well, you don't have to use the init keyword. You could just use the constructor and pass the parameter in the constructor if you really want to, and then that you can initialize here. The alternative to making this init only as well, of course, is removing the required keyword and removing the init and then making a constructor. And that constructor can have the name and then you can say name is name. And that's about it. You can pass all the other things down. There's no point in doing that because now we have the init keyword and we have the required keyword. So why would you bother? So that kind of kills all the immutability discussions for me, because why would you go back to a field that you publicly expose? And yes, it's read only, so you can't change this value, but then you have to use constructor for everything. So you're forcing the user to use that, but someone might not want to use the constructor to initialize it. They might want to use the initialization approach over here. Or what if to represent state like this, you use a record. So you say public record, user, and just for the uh, differentiation, I put a big R in the end, and then you have name, and then string surname, and then string email. Guess what those things are in records by default? They are all properties, and they're properties because they should be. If I just quickly compile this code and I show you the lowered C sharp code, what this thing will be turned into, what you end up with is private read-only backing fields, exactly the same thing that these properties end up being uh, in normal classes. And then you set the value and you have a getter and an init. So it sort of unwraps itself by creating something like this. You have a private string name field, and then you get that field by basically doing this which is the expressive version of the auto property. And then you can also have this. You can say name is the value. So you can have the ability to manipulate the initialized data like this and store it into a field, which in return means you can do things on an individual property level without having to put all that logic in the constructor, which is what you would do now to serve this data. Also, if you want to have a computed property, you just sort of have now to maintain two things at the same time, because if the full name is the first name, so we say 
name and then space surnames, then you're serving two different types of data to your users, even though they kind of look the same. All that could just be done with properties that are required and in it only, and that would just all work without any problems. Now, the other benefit of the record, which I'm going to use here, is that the record allows you to do what that person suggested, which is if you want a new user and that user only has a few things changed, for example, the first name, I can say that the new user is a user to, so this record, with, and I can say the name being John. And that gives you that new user who has everything the same as the original one, but with a different property on the name. So even though that user here, the user two, is immutable, and I can't say, you know, John here, that doesn't matter because I can generate a new class and that new class with a with keyword only has that new property. The rest is just basically copied. Now, this means because records are classes by default, I am going to have a whole new object allocation and that is expensive. So you do want to use it sparingly, but we do have an option to do this if you want that immutability with the ability to create a new object easily. So saying just turn everything into an immutable class just doesn't make sense, especially if your recommendation is a field. Why? There's also massive problems with this approach if you are to use it with anti framework because the change tracker will be all messed up, database interactions would be a nightmare. This is not the type of convention that idiomatic C sharp is expecting, and everything is built around properties in a way that you can't just turn into a field and expect everything to work. Making blanket statements so generic as make all classes immutable because it is cohesive and immutable and clean and I don't know, whatever else, it, uh, please don't do it. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And do you think there's a reason to do this that I can't see? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.